Hi guys, welcome to another chemical engineering tutorial brought to you by the ChemEng student. In this lesson we're going to take a look at a complete guide to the Bernoulli equation. Now this is the first video in our June competition whereby you can win £1,000 every month for an entire year. So be sure to check out the question at the end of this video. So the first thing that we have to ask yourself is what is Bernoulli's equation? Well in simple terms Bernoulli's equation provides us a relationship between the pressure, the velocity and the elevation to explain the fluid flow and the behaviour of a given fluid. Now in simple and most basic terms the Bernoulli's equation can be expressed as the following. So we have P plus rho over 2 V squared plus rho GZ equals some constant. Now this will be important later on when we begin to analyse and relate pieces of information together. But if we consider each of these uh, parameters individually, then we can consider these in terms of pressure, velocity and elevation. So the first term P refers to what's known as the static pressure. And this is simply the pressure energy. So that's the amount of energy exerted by the fluid at any point in time. The second term is the dynamic pressure and we can refer to this as kinetic energy because this is the amount of energy that accompanies the fluid as it flows. So that's probably one of the more important parameters in terms of fluid flow. The third term is our potential pressure. And this is based on the idea of a difference between the starting point and the end point that we are interested in in terms of the elevation. Now here it can be referred to as H, but it can also be referred to as Z. So we have our density, we have our gravitational constant because if we were going say up a distance, then gravity would be trying to pull us down. And then we'd multiply that by the height or the elevation difference between the starting point and the end point. And we deem this potential energy or potential pressure as well. Now, when we come to actually applying Bernoulli's equation, one of the, the key things is we can actually relate the equation to another one because they would be equal to the same constant. So... What we can say here is at any given point, so we could call one our starting position and two our um, end position. So we can actually relate a starting pressures, ending pressures, starting velocities, finishing velocities and the different elevations. Now, while it's kind of out with the scope for us as engineers in terms of the derivation of Bernoulli's equation, it's a good idea to see in a general sense how it's derived because that will give us a more and better appreciation for the variables involved. Now we can either model Bernoulli's equation by conservation of mass or by Newton's second law. And the one that we're going to go for is Newton's second law, which states that the summation of the forces is equal to the mass of the material multiplied by A. So mass times acceleration equals force. Now the subscript S simply will denote direction. But in order for this to work, we need the following set of assumptions. We need a steady flow, so we need steady state. We need an incompressible fluid modelling. Now that's really important because when we talk about incompressible fluids, that means that our density will remain constant. And that is essential for Bernoulli's equation to actually be applied. Because if we begin to work on the assumption that we have compressible flow, then that is going to require us to use partial and full differential equations. Now another um, assumption would be the frictional forces are negligible. So what we're seeing here is we have an inviscous system. So we can neglect any frictional forces which basically opposes the direction of flow. So if our flow is going from left to right, 
the frictional forces would act in the opposite direction. And then finally, we have to assume a linear momentum fluid behavior. So if we don't assume a linear behavior, then this equation simply will not stand. Now, the reasons why is well out with the scope of this tutorial. But if we account for the pressure and the weight, so we're, we're gonna, when we model this, we're gonna consider the pressure and the weight of each of the particles. Now, S is the direction of flow. So what we can do here is we can express the equation as follows. Now, you might be asking, how on earth did we create this equation? Where did it come from? Well, if we include a schematic of the system, so we have is a plot of Z against X. Now, this line here refers to the steady flow along the streamline, so that is the direction of S. Now, when we are modeling any system, and this is similar to the model of a plug flow reactor, is we take a chunk of the system and we model around this chunk. So what we are saying here is at this point, so the movement is coming up like so. So we are saying that the pressure multiplied by the area is this part here. So that's, the, that's basically the input. Now we have some distance ds. So we don't know what that is. That's just our differential expression for s. And at the end, so at the opposing side, we'll have the pressure plus the difference in the pressure exerted by the ds value. So that's where we have p plus dp. So that's the differential of the pressure for this given part of the system, which we can then, because we have a differential equation, we can integrate it and that will give us our specified limits. Now, one of the other parameters that we have here is W, and W infers to the weight. So the weight, as this particle moves in this direction, the weight is actually being pulled down, like so. So you can see the, the arrow in its direction is pulling straight down. And this is governed by the angle of theta. Now, theta is basically this angle between the the streamline and the normal of the particle and the normal is basically any line that is perpendicular to the axis of interest so for example this n value here is the normal of stream s which we can see is exactly the same in terms of w and the difference between w and the normal so that line there is the normal the difference between those is theta. And again, you can express this in terms of Pythagoras, and you can prove why it is sine and not cos or tan. Now this has to be equal to, as we said, if we use Newton's second law, the conservation of mass. So we have the mass times the volume dv by dz, ds. So that's the change in the volume with respect to the distance. Now, the only problem we have here is W as it stands is not in the correct form or in the correct way in which we can relate this to the conservation of mass. So what we need to do here is gather the general physical properties that govern the weight. And the way that we do this is as follows. So we specify that the mass is equal to the density times the volume because the kilograms would remain from the density and uh, the volumes would cancel themselves out. Now we can also express this as rho dA dS. So that is the multiplication of the cross-sectional area by the direction dS. Now if we say W is the mass times gravitational force, because remember that is it pulling down the way. Then we have exactly the same correlation, but instead of um, not having the G here, we include the G, because we know what M is. M is rho dA dS, so we now multiply that by G. Now sine theta, we know from the schematic from Pythagoras 
that that is the ratio between dz and ds. So we've now brought in this idea of the, the elevation difference. And that's what we need because we know the elevation is part of Bernoulli's equation. So what we can now do is substitute in our respective values and we'll pop them into the equation. Now we can make some simplifications here because we can cancel out the DAs on all the terms. They appear exactly the same. So what we now contain is minus dp minus rho g ds s multiplied by dz over ds. So that's the difference in the elevation with respect to the direction. Difference in the velocity with respect to the direction. So we can also make a note here that vdv, so the change in the velocity, is equal to a half multiplied by the differential of the square of the velocity. So that is a general correlation when we talk about um, momentum transfer. So what we can then do is replace our vdv, which from the previous uh, equation, with our given system. And we can also divide all the terms by the density. And that will give us this equation here. Now our assumption that we need our steady flow allows us to get rid of these differential equations. Because we can take rho out, we can differentiate, uh, sorry, integrate dp, which is going to give us p. We can um, integrate dv squared, which is going to give us, as you would see, v squared. So we have p plus rho over 2 v squared plus rho gz equals some constant. So that is the, the general derivation using Newton's second law for Bernoulli's equation. So we can see the relationship between the variables and how we ended up at this particular equation. Now, there are alternatives because as it stands just now, that is only useful based on a certain given amount of data. But we can also express Bernoulli's equation in energy form and also in head form. And in energy form, what we do is we have divided by the density. So we now have p over rho plus v squared over 2 plus gz. That is it in terms of its energy form. And again, they're all equal to some constant. In terms of head, because this is basically the energy form here. In terms of head form, that would be the z term. So we now divide all the terms by the gravitational constant, and we would get this equation here. And again, make a note that is always equal to some unknown constant. Now, while Bernoulli's equation is very powerful in terms of fluid dynamics and fluid modeling, there is some limitations and it's based on the initial assumptions that we made. Because with anything, the more assumptions that you make, the more limitations you are exerting on your equation. So if we're faced with a, a system whereby we have a compressible fluid or indeed unsteady flow, then what we have to do is so as that you don't have to look, we have included the equations here. So if we have compressible flow, we have to include this value of k. And this is the compressibility factor. So what we're basically saying here is the compressibility factor multiplied by the pressures will allow us to account for the change in the compressibility of the fluid. Now, unsteady, we have the added bonus, per se, of a partial differential equation, which is a partial differential between the distance with respect to time. And this is to account on the at kinetic energy side because we have to account for fluctuations in the fluid flow. And that's you getting into the, the realm of, say, turbulent flow. So this partial differential equation 
allows us to account for the irregularities that will encompass an unsteady flow. Because unsteady flow, we can't predict the model. With steady flow, we can predict exactly what is going to happen. So that's why we have a partial differential and not a full differential equation. So now it's your chance um, to enter our monthly competition, whereby you can win £1,000 every month for an entire year. And all you have to do is answer the following question correctly. What phenomenon is responsible for why we can assume that Bernoulli's equation can be applied to all liquids, but not gases? So to enter, all you have to do is answer the question and comment your answer to this video, like and subscribe to the channel, and make sure that you're subscribed to the Facebook page, because that's where we will announce the winner at the end, on the 5th of next month. Make sure your entries are in by the 30th of June, otherwise you won't be entered into this month's competition. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding the concept and the applications of Bernoulli's equation. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you in another video.